For the last two months, I've been really stressed out over my businesses. Financially, they've been some of the best months, but I've enjoyed working a lot less. I've gotten less quality work done, and I essentially forgot what I even wanted out of working for myself. So whether you work for yourself now or you're just wanting a better work-life balance, we need to talk about this one little thing that's probably holding you back more than you even know. Direction. Or goal setting, I'm not exactly sure how to label it. So let's talk about why not doing this has led to so much suppressed anxiety for me in the past couple months. Then we'll talk about what I just did to make sure that I'm growing my businesses the way that I actually want to and how that will correlate directly to what you want to do with your business, side hustle, or just work-life balance. The full story could take like a full day or I guess an hour if I talk as fast as some of the people in my comments think that I talk. But we'll just hit the highlights real fast. Graduating college, I didn't want to work for anybody else and so I had tried a few ways to build up an income for myself, either through doing some woodworking, starting a couple of YouTube channels that ultimately failed or day trading. Don't try that. And a bunch of other ways that I didn't have a lot of intention behind and so none of them ended up working out. So I started working for a couple different companies all the while trying to do something for myself and then starting this YouTube channel where I wanted to help people with their finances. But it turned out to be way harder than I thought and after moving up the ladder at one company and then switching to a different company to buy back a little bit more of my time, I realized that since I'd been reselling shoes for a while on eBay, I could transfer some of those skills to Amazon FBA and then buy back my time to do what I really wanted to do which was create videos and help people with with their finances, businesses. If you're new to the channel, don't click off yet. I promise I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't have anything to sell you. This is just something that worked for me. Probably if you're watching this, I've seen some ads of people trying to sell that to you. That's not me, don't worry. So I started reselling on Amazon, which is a whole different story. And after just a couple of months, I was actually able to leave my job in November of 2020. Yeah, 2020, these past couple of years are a blur. And the goal with leaving my job was to build up the YouTube channel to be a full-time income source and resell just a supplement so I could buy back my time, which is why I was only doing it a couple times a month. Also during that time, my wife and I wanted to build out a van and go travel the country in it and so far one and a half of those things have come true which is pretty cool okay back into this story I thought that buying back all of that time and using it to make YouTube videos would make getting monetized on YouTube and building this as an income source really easy but it took way longer than I expected so I finally sat down and did the process that we're talking about in this video and after two years I was able to get monetized on YouTube in about a two to three month time of intentional work there and then I had another snag because we wanted to leave a month earlier in our van so I stopped doing any work for a month and a half and just built the van which dropped a lot of momentum both here on the channel and on Amazon but finally I thought we have this whole van built out I would have plenty of time to actually do work and really the only projects that I'd be working on were my businesses rather than working on the projects of quitting my job and the projects of building up the van so I thought I'd be able to build my YouTube into a serious income source maintain a healthy Amazon income but these past couple months have really proved to me that having just empty space and time for something to happen isn't automatically going to make it happen and there's actually a letter that's in the back of my van that if I would have followed it I might be in a much better spot than I am now but I wrote it stored it and haven't looked at it in forever I think it's still in here but I've actually might have thrown it out I don't remember got it now the big reason that I feel I was able to get monetized in that two or three month time frame is because I had set some goals in a previous video I was really intentionally working towards making them happen I'm a little scared for what this says about my Amazon and YouTube businesses but let's real quick read what my goals were for Q3 which ended in September. Make $2,100 in YouTube revenue. July through September. $1,200. <laughs> it was like half of it. Spend $2,000 bi-weekly for Amazon. That didn't happen. Yeah, I think basically if we look back at this, we'll see that I have done almost none of these goals. Quick, this is just going to go in the trash so I don't have to think about it again. You might relate because if you were like me, you thought that the perfect work-life balance would just kind of fall into your lap when something happened for you. For me, that was like, oh, when I quit my job, it's going to be perfect. Oh, when I build out the van, I'll have so much time and everything's going to be perfect. But it just doesn't doesn't happen like that unfortunately. It turns out that getting a better amount and quality of work done while also having less stress is something that's actually gonna take work. Freaking lame! And so what's interesting is these past two months, basically the work that I did wasn't nearly as much as I probably should be doing. I probably only worked about 25 hours a week. And it's also caused me to do way more work in my Amazon business than on my YouTube channel, even though the whole purpose of me selling on Amazon was for me to start this YouTube channel and to build it up. And on top of all of that, like I said at the very beginning, even though I've made some of the most money that I have across all my businesses, I've had so much more anxiety specifically about money than I have in a very long time and I think all of that is because I didn't realize where I was now and where I wanted to be not only financially but with the quality of work I was doing the quantity of work I was doing and the overall type of work that I was doing split between the couple businesses that I have so here's how I'm fixing that the six major things that I think are necessary to make sure that you're going to be going where you want to in your businesses or work life so I sat down today and actually wrote down three pages worth of goals for what I want my next one month of work to look like 
and I needed it to be that specific because I hadn't done this in a while. Before I had done quarterly goals, which was great, but I really needed to jumpstart my work right now and even just prove to myself that I am capable of doing a lot of work while in this living situation since I haven't done that since moving into the van. I've condensed this three pages into pretty much just this one page, which will be really helpful for something we'll get to and we'll go over the goals in a second, but less important than what my specific goals were for the next month. We need to talk about how I created these goals so that they're not easy, but they are achievable and they won't cause me a lot of stress when trying to actually do them. So the first important thing is that the goals are based on data and analytics. So the main goal that I have for December is to post one video every day on YouTube. This is an output based goal, meaning that's what I'm going to be doing. The outcome will be what that brings to my channel in terms of views and subscribers and money. Forgot the word for revenue for a second. And so because I know that there are 31 days in December, that means uploading a video every day will bring 31 videos. So I looked back at what so far was my most successful time on YouTube which was the two month period between July 1st and August 31st where I was building a lot of momentum and then I stopped posting because of the van. But during this time, I posted 22 pieces of content as we'll see down here. I didn't include this last live stream because it was just an announcement of a giveaway winner, but I got 43.2 thousand views and made $982.68. So to make my goal based on analytics, I took the 22 videos that I made, knowing that I was gonna do 31 videos, they're coming for me. I love living in a van, so many noises. So I took 31 divided by 22, and I know that I'm gonna be doing 1.41 times the amount of videos that I did over that two month period. And so I multiplied the views and revenue by that number. And that's what brought me to my ultimate goal being 61,000 views and $1,400 in revenue, which is a little bit higher than 1.41 times the amount of views and revenue from that two month period. Now, because I'm a little crazy and I want something to shoot for, if I think that this is too achievable, I also made a stretch goal of 100,000 views and $2,500 in ad revenue. That way, if I see that I'm on the trajectory to hit this pretty easily, I'll have something further to go for. But since I've never output this much, it's a little bit stressful and I've never gotten even close to that amount of views. That's triple the most views I've ever gotten in one month. So it seems scary, but when I look at it based on the analytics that I already have, it's achievable and I won't be stressed out about it because it's not just a number that I'm pulling out of the air. I don't know if this is a word, but your goal should be time bound enough to be motivational and visualizable. It's pretty hard for something to motivate you if you can't actually visualize what it is. And so the end of December is a pretty concrete thing to me. The end of 2022 isn't. And so even though I am planning on making goals for the end of 2022, I'm going to break them down into smaller chunks that I can more easily visualize and get myself all the way to that end goal by having goals that are visualizable enough so that they can motivate me to actually do it. That also creates a pretty big sense of urgency because if I feel like I have 400 days to do something, I won't be as proactive in doing it as if I really feel like I only have 31 days to do something. The third is one of the things that's probably going to motivate you the most, and that is you need to share your goals. Even though I put those Q3 goals that I just put in the trash in a video before, and I had shared them with my wife, they weren't something that I ever looked back to. I put these goals on one sheet of paper so that I could have it easily accessible to read exactly what I wanna do. I'm also gonna have it in digital form shared with my wife so that she can keep me accountable with it and obviously we'll have this video so you guys can keep me accountable. But it's even something that can be as simple as putting it on your fridge if your fridge didn't just happen to be in a drawer. One thing about this though is that you should share it with somebody who actually cares that you're achieving your goals or that sharing it with them would make you feel like you're letting them down if you don't get it done. Not in an unhealthy way that creates undue stress, but in a healthy way that helps you get it done better. Personally, I hate letting people down, but if that's not such a big motivating factor for you. The fourth thing that you should do with your goals is to give it stakes, either positive or negative stakes. So if you get it done, you get to reward yourself with something big or something bigger than you normally do. And if you don't get it done, if you're more motivated by negative feedback, then you might want to punish yourself for not getting it done. Nothing that takes it too far, but the sweet spot of you being motivated, but also you not like castigating yourself. Personally for this month, I don't have any stakes and we'll get to that in the fifth thing that we talk about. But if this isn't something that you need, you don't always need stakes, but it can be helpful or just fun. The fifth thing is something that might get people to argue with me about it, but I have some pretty strong feelings about this and it is having a contingency plan. When I was sharing all my goals with my wife and having her pumps them up so that they would be better goals or see if they were actually realistic in her eyes since she lives with me, she asked me one question that I hadn't thought about before and you might have thought about either. And her question was, what happens when you're halfway through the month and you haven't hit your goals and you're not on target to. Now this wasn't to say that she didn't believe me, it was just to make sure that I have a contingency plan in case things don't happen. And this is where I have honestly a little bit of a rant because I've seen a lot of content uh, on Instagram, YouTube, or just like from like the alpha bro, entrepreneurially mindset kind of stuff. And they use this metaphor that 
I hate so much. You've probably heard about it before, but it's the idea that when Cortez sailed to Mexico, he burned the ships so that nobody could go back to the homeland in Spain. I'm just like, why in the world are you getting your business advice from a genocidal colonizer? That makes no sense. Like, do you really want your legacy to be like his? Are you freaking kidding me? Especially nowadays where there's so much more technology and ability to have contingency plans. I, I don't know. It just, it blows my mind that some people think that that's a good example to have about life and business. But then the argument, which I also think is pretty dumb, is like, well, it's not gonna be motivational if you have a back out plan, you can know that you can just quit. And like, first off, that can be really healthy for your mental health and telling people that they can't quit something is not necessarily a good thing. But if you've done the other four things when setting up your goals, it's not necessarily going to be something that dismotivates you, unmotivates you. I don't know how to say that word. I'm a little heated. But by having a contingency plan, you're not gonna be less motivated. It actually helped me to feel more motivated and comfortable with my goals after I made it with Carissa. And so let's go over mine real quick before we get to the next part of how you should be setting your goals. That's the contingency plan on this page, but it's a little bit small. So we're gonna pull it up over here. And essentially what's gonna happen is December 15th I'm gonna reevaluate and see if I'm on track to hit my goals and since there are two different types of goals output goals and outcome goals if I don't hit my output goals that means that there's more something wrong with me and how I'm actually approaching the work it could be that it is actually just too much work for me to get done but I don't think that's the case as you'll see with my goals as we go over them for just a split second later so the reason that I would feel that I wasn't getting these things done is probably something going on with my mental health and me feeling either depressed which means that I'll work less or overwhelmed by stuff and so my continue contingency plan is if I'm not hitting my output goals, I'll talk to my ex-counselor for two weeks of weekly coaching because that was something that really helped me towards the end of living in Orlando. But if I don't hit my outcome goals, that's not really something that is as much in my control because if I'm doing everything output wise, this is just stuff that should happen since we're getting better at what we're doing and it's based on data like we talked about in the first step. So if I don't hit my output goals, I just wrote down, hey, don't worry about it. Let's reevaluate and look back in it on the last week of December, which you'll realize why in a second, or in the first week of January. And that's because momentum takes time. So if I'm trying to get 60,000 views, it might mean I get 20,000 views in the first 14 days and then 40,000 views in the second 14 days and I can still hit my goal. But even further than that, I realized that the reason that I'm doing all this isn't necessarily to make that amount of money because financially we'll be fine no matter what. We're safe. We have an emergency fund. We have enough revenue to pull out of the business no matter what. It was all about getting back to work in the van. And so realizing that is something that's been super helpful for me. So create a contingency plan and when you're going to check back to see if you've hit your goals or not. And if you haven't, just have something actionable that you can do right then and there. That makes me so much more confident in me hitting my goals because I know that if I can't hit my goals, it won't be something that I just spiral about and get even further depressed. There's stuff that I can do about it. Also, F colonialism. Sixth thing. Calm down just a little bit. Base your goals around your overall life desires. This isn't something that I hear a lot of people talking about necessarily, and it can be the reason that you might build your business too big or have too many employees. Just overall not do something that you actually want to with your business, which is what I've been doing over the past couple of months where I've been defaulting to working on reselling because it's easier to do and has a more tangible return, but that's not ultimately what I want. You don't always have to be growing a bigger business. You don't have to say yes to an opportunity just because it's gonna make you some revenue. If you have an actual idea of what you want your life to look like, you'll be able to say yes and no to the correct opportunities. Personally, I want to be able to adventure and travel around more in my van, be able to get physically fit again because I haven't been working out nearly as much as I should. I'm setting these goals to be more intentional with my time so that I'm able to do everything that I need to get done, but also have more time available to hit these life goals. I want to make enough money to start investing in the stock market again, but also have less stress with making money. So I'm trying to spend more time making YouTube videos and less time reselling. But if you're here for the reselling videos, don't worry, there's no plan for those to go away anytime soon. I've just been spending a lot of time reselling by default. And so now, all my goals include only reselling when I'm actually filming videos for YouTube as well. So I'm still making money on Amazon, showing you guys everything that I'm doing while reselling and making sure that the time is used more intentionally. So with that in mind, real fast, here are my goals for December. We'll just run through this page so you can keep me accountable. And if you need someone to be accountable with, go on to my Instagram at AMBDNZA. If you just need to send them to someone so that somebody else knows, definitely hit me up. So overall, my goal is to post at least one video per day all of December. I want at least 10 of them to be non-reselling specific videos because there's so much with business in general and with money that you need to understand if you want your reselling business to actually serve you rather than just trying to make more and more money without a super specific purpose. I've realized that there's no need for live streams anymore because that's been something that has been stressing me out trying to get places on time that have service and they haven't done as much for me as I would like. I'd like to reach out to at least 10 creators for collaboration, one of them who's big, re-optimize at least 10 videos with title and thumbnail for search or browse, have enough private uploads by the end of day 
on Christmas Eve for the whole month, which basically just means that if I don't do any work for the last week, I'll at least be able to get my 31 videos up. And I want to link to other videos in at least 25 videos with thumbnail in the video, like I already did when I was talking about Q2 goals and getting monetized on YouTube. Then we've already talked about views and revenue. And then I also have another channel, which you should check out, called The Story Travelers, where we're posting all about our adventures here in the van, and my goal is to post at least one video a week on that channel and get it to 100 subscribers, which maybe you guys can make happen right now, and over 200 hours of watch time. So if you're not interested in that stuff, don't subscribe to that channel, but if you are, definitely subscribe, give it a like, watch those videos, that'd be awesome. Then for reselling, my goal is to send in $4,000 of potential profit this month. I actually sent about $5,500 this month in November already, and I want to only resell while I'm filming as well, excluding shipments. So I could still do shipments because those take a lot of time and that's hard to film. I want to sell at least $10,000 this month and I also want to buy my first fully online arbitrage product and if I don't do that, I'm going to do it in January. And then we talked about our contingency plan. So now that you know that I want to post a video every single day in December, if you post a request for a video down in the comments of this video, I'll definitely get it done in December if you comment it by December 1st. If you comment it after December 1st, I'll still definitely do the video, but it probably won't be in December because I already have like 60 something videos in the works. If you stuck around this long, you're probably interested in diving a little deeper into your business and you can watch this video to help you out with your finances with that and I'll show you exactly how I do everything to make sure that I can pay myself, pay for my business expenses and grow for the future. See you Monday.